Neurotransmitter effects when you can't, can't get rid of ammonia. So here's another factor. We look at QA step seven. When we look at QA step seven, what we do is we deal with, uh, in that area, we deal with ammonia metabolism, bleach and ammonia and aldehyde sniff tests. Well, patients sometimes can't metabolize ammonia. So the QA step seven plays an important role here in the ammonia sniff test um, when patients can't metabolize ammonia. And it becomes an issue with neurotransmitters we need to discuss. NH3 ammonia uh, decreases inhibitory neurotransmitters such as GABA and glycine and increases excitatory neurotransmitters such as glutamic acid and aspartic acid, glutamate or aspartate. Neurotransmitter effects of excess ammonia are due to ammonia converting one neurotransmitter into another neurotransmitter. For example, the neurotransmitter effects of excess glutamine include glutamic acid with ammonia becomes glutamine. So neurotransmitter effects of excess ammonia, glutamic acid, if there's too much ammonia, will be all forced into glutamine. Now normally, this is a normal pathway. But glutamic acid also gets converted into GABA in a normal pathway. If there's too much ammonia, it short circuits all the glutamic acid, takes it into glutamine. Similarly, aspartic acid, if there's too much ammonia, becomes asparagine, which is not really a neurotransmitter substance at all. So here we see alpha-ketoglutaric acid, which comes from the Krebs cycle. Under the influence of ammonia, becomes glutamic acid. And then under the influence of ammonia, becomes glutamine. Here, oxaloacetic acid from the Krebs cycle, under the influence of ammonia, becomes aspartic acid. And then with another ammonia attached, becomes asparagine. So the ammonia metabolism, which is part of the normal synthesis and breakdown of different neurotransmitters, can actually, if it's over uh, burdening the body, if we can't get rid of ammonia, which is not uncommon, uh, it really can have major effects on brain neurotransmission effects. So here we have glutamate. It can be either converted into GABA or under the influence of ammonia into glutamine. Excess ammonia drives glutamate into glutamine instead of GABA. So if you have too much ammonia, you don't have enough GABA. It's one of the reasons why people don't have enough GABA and maybe need to more GABA activity. It's one of the reasons why people will sometimes respond to drugs which are GABAergic drugs, which are usually benzodiazepines like Xanax and Valium and, and um, uh, clonazepam and uh, all the other ones that people are taking. So these excess ammonia changes these drugs and changes neurotransmitter expression in the brain. When there's excess ammonia also, uh, or deficient arginase or manganese, which help to get rid of ammonia, glycine may be depleted. So glycine is another inhibitory neurotransmitter. So here we have the urea cycle. The urea cycle combines ammonia and carbon dioxide, generates uh, a molecule arginine, which is worked on by an enzyme called arginase, which is a manganese-dependent enzyme. Arginine contains three ammonia molecules. It gives off two of them in the form of urea, which then goes and is excreted in the urine. It then becomes ornithine and keeps the cycle going. Well, if you don't have enough arginase enzyme, or if there's not enough manganese to activate it, the arginine with all its ammonia has to do something. <coughs> so what it does, it combines with glycine. And the combination of arginine and glycine have a couple pathways, one of which is guanidoacetate, which then becomes creatine, which then becomes phosphocreatine, which is what we use as a secondary source of energy for phosphate, high energy phosphate bonds, which then becomes creatinine in the urine. So creatinine in the urine is the secondary route of, of, of elimination of ammonia, which is always going on in the background at sort of pretty much a constant rate. What can happen is if you have a blockage without the arginase enzyme, without manganese, either one or both, then the arginine shunts off into the second pathway and it would increase the creatinine, creatinine in the urine, which you can measure in the urine or in the blood. Um, and the ammonia doesn't usually eliminate as well that way. It backs up and you get a weakening on ammonia. That ammonia that backs up in the central nervous system changes glutamic acid, making it into glutamine, and you don't get as much GABA, which is inhibitory neurotransmitter. Also, then, this pathway depletes the glycine, so you have it lost another inhibitory neurotransmitter. So this ammonia molecule is something we must talk about when we talk about neurotransmitters and make sure that if you're having patients who show a similar pattern of, of uh, lack of GABA, for example, or lack of glycine, maybe the problem is that they're having it uh, all secondary to ammonia excess. We have to deal with ammonia.